Good morning. So let me welcome all of you on behalf of our provost, Dr. Peters. She invited Dr. Omar uh, for this seminar and help us to develop a MS Biotech program. Okay. So that's where he will be involved. He may come back again. And as the time is short, I will cut down and Jessica will introduce uh, Dr. Omar. Good morning. For those that don't know me, my name is Jessica and I'm a senior here at Auburn State with uh, biology with a concentration in biotechnology. And it is my pleasure to introduce our distinguished speaker here, Dr. Omar Bagarsara, who holds an MD and a PhD. Dr. Bagarsara is a professor of biology. He's the director at South Carolina Center for Biotechnology at Kathleen University in South Carolina and he is a clinical professor for pathology, microbiology, and immunology at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine. He did his master's in biochemistry from University of Karachi, his PhD in microbiology and immunology from University of Kentucky, Louisville, and he obtained his MD from a university in Mexico. After his MD degree, he did his residency in pathology from Heinemann University and Temple University, Philadelphia. He holds 26 patents since 1996. His most recent one includes a dipstick test to identify newborns who are at risk for autism and a brand new method to produce a new class of antibiotics. He has received funding from the National Institute of Health National Science Foundation, Department of Defense, Department of Education, and United States Agency for International Development with several other grants in pipeline and under preparation. Some of the awards he has received include the first patent for in situ PCR technology. He's an elected member for the AACR MICR. He is a winner of the Link Award, a co-winner for South Carolina Governor's Award for Science Awareness, He's an Outstanding Teacher Award, the Hunter Award for our Outstanding Performance in Teaching and Educational Development, Leadership in Research Award by Kaplan University, and Outstanding Services to Minority Mentoring Program. He is a reviewer and editorial board member for several top leading research journals and panelist on several board, review board member of the NIH and several other funding agencies. He has authored about 180 scientific papers, has written 36 different chapters and books, and is the author of 10 books. He has been a keynote speaker at 75 meetings in the symp Symposium of National and International Repute. Today he will share his work on role of environmental factors in autism, what causes autism, why is it increasing, how can we prevent it. And let's welcome him. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Today, I'm going to talk to you about autism. As you probably ever heard, some of you heard what autism looks like, what autism does, and we see the whole thing. I see the more than more thing. So, autism is a communication disorder. Very unusual. It has a spectrum. This means a very severe, very severe to highly intelligent people. So you have extremely disability or communication disorder to people who are outstanding and brilliant. In between are most of the people in there. So this spectrum is very unusual. One of the things they do is to autistic child have repetitive behavior. So they will do one thing like I'm doing this I'll be just doing that. I would not make eye contact. So the person would not make eye contact with you. Now, if you are in this end of the spectrum, that baby is really, 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 really disabled. Very difficult. Most of the women fall in the middle. If you are the other end of the spectrum, you'll be like Einstein. Einstein has Asperger syndrome. Okay, Michael Jackson most likely had it, 
Thomas Jefferson probably had it. Mozart probably had it. If any of you ever seen a movie called Amadeus, you should see it. How Mozart is really life researched, research, well researched work of Mozart life. This is the way he really was. A brilliant boy who actually composed beautiful music at age three. Same like Michael Jackson. You ever seen Michael Jackson? He, he, he. Man, he was, he was unbelievable. Most likely he had some issue with, some people say, uh, Asperger. Most of the people believe the autism is a genetic disease. Today I'm going to tell you that most of the people are wrong. Okay, there are gene defect which are an autistic baby gene, DNA. But primarily is not the main reason. Primarily is exposure to environment. And I'm going to convince you today, hopefully, that if you really look at all the experts, in, you know, people who are in this, in this expert in this field, you will see that is not the case. You 80 to 85 percent, we don't know what causes autism. And this is the one of the reasons we don't have a cure, we don't have prevention, because we don't know what is causing it. Now, you have to excuse me, this part, people actually think this, all these things are part of autism. But I want you to pay attention to this and this, de novo, de novo, mutation. De novo means the baby is in the, in here, fetus is inside mother's womb, and it will develop genetic defect. They are not found in mother or father, any of those genetic defects. Trio analysis, we do three analysis, same time, whole genome analysis for mother, father, and a baby. Only baby has this genetic defect, de novo, this inside. Okay, and then 80 to 85, unknown. I'm saying because we unknown because they are genetic defect caused during the gestational period when baby is inside mother's womb. And I'm going to convince you today that that's probably the way we need to concentrate in our research. So they are rare genetic diseases, all of these. All of these which relate to this part here. They are genetic diseases in which baby has intellectual disability. One of the disabilities which is falls into the spectrum, it doesn't mean that this baby actually have eye contact issue or communication issue depending on how bad the genetic defect is. <coughs> Most of you probably know there's called gene penetrance. This means a genetic defect somebody inherited from their parents, mother or father, or both. It's autosomal recessive. Then what happened is that depend on the degree of penetrance of, of that gene, that baby could be totally normal and nobody can recognize that person has that genetic disease, or could be so severe that person will have intellectual disability and fall into autism. What really happening? Autism starts at age eight week of gestation up here. Up here to all the way to 20 feet, 24 week of gestation when your brain is developing. When your brain is just about to start, see the size of the brain? That's the size of the brain that time. Brain is this big, eight week of gestation. So what happened? I'm going to show you that if you expose the baby to environmental chemicals, specific environmental chemicals, not all of them, they will hit the brain in neuron which is, which is growing leaps and bound at that stage. Remember you start from this and you develop into this. This, this little thing in here, if you take one cell out of that, so human brain have thousands of faculties. Remember you use the two kind of faculty. One faculty is that me and Dr. Jane 
and gentlemen there, and Dr. William. We are faculty. We never say faculties. We use the word faculty. In the brain, we have faculties. It's the only time you use that we have 1,286 faculties in the human brain. If you take one of the cells out from there, from here, this was only 1,000 or 2,000 cells in there. If you take one of them out, you took the faculty out. You took the whole faculty because this faculty would never develop. If you take two or three out from a chemical, a synthetic chemical which you, somebody got exposed to, you lost part of that, part of, you part big piece of it. And this empty space will be filled by another cell type because you cannot have empty space in the brain, developing brain. Human have 100 billion neuron. How many? 100 billion neuron. We, nobody on earth, no creature on earth has brain this big. Not my brain, but all of yours. Mine is probably about half their size, but you know what I mean. So you can see what happened to you when you take out a faculty. You, depending on the cell type, which replace that faculty, if it's a fast growing cell line, the faculty, it will take over the brain and you will have a much bigger brain. So autistic children, a large percent would have a much 30% bigger brain than a normal human brain. Big brain, but the wires are crossed. Why it is happening and when it started to happen. So about 1920s, one in 100,000 baby had autism. One in 100,000. Then we started industrial revolution. We started to de develop synthetic chemical in our life. You see, you have water bottle, you have paraben in there. Plastic started then, 1960. If you have, you see glyphosate, it's a roundup. Roundup is a deadly chemical. Now, a lot of people say, well, it doesn't do anything to, to eukaryote. It's only affect prokaryotic life form, true? But all the way up here, starting from here, all the way up here, you have microbiome. You have bacteria, which are 10 times more bacteria. So we have 3 trillion cells in our body. That has 30 trillion, you have 30 trillion microbes. And what they do, they actually make beneficial chemical for us. If they get messed up because of Roundup, glyphosate, we are messed up. And I'll show you some data from MIT and Harvard, see what they're saying. We work on fragrance. I so, said, oh, Dr. B works on fragrance. We want to see fragrance causing mutation and disturbance in the brain. Since we are short of time today, I'm going to try to, try to do, convince you what is going on. You have endocrine disturbing chemical. Endocrine disturb, disrupting chemical are found in perfume and fragrance. So all of you are exposed to fragrance. If you don't wear perfume, you're still exposed to it because you go to the bathroom, you hear this bathroom detergent. If you have, sitting in your car, you may have a fresh, freshener, air freshener. If you go to any bathroom, you have air freshener. You go to anywhere, if you wash your clothes, it has, has a fragrance in it. These are the deadly fragrance for a fetus. Not you, for a fetus, it is the deadliest thing you can give to your fetus as a gift. Somebody hugged you if you don't like fragrance. Oh, somebody gave you a hug in the morning. Oh, my daughter, my dear, you look so good. And some people just hug each other for no reason whatsoever. If the mother doesn't know she's pregnant at four weeks, but her baby got that from because you hugged somebody with a so huge fragrance. Some people have fragrance so far, you can smell it from miles, right? What they're doing, what they're emitting, they're actually emitting Volatile compound. Volatile compounds are the one with a low temperature, room temperature. They blow out of your body and go into around everyone. But you notice when you use a powerful perfume, you don't smell that after a while. You guys notice that? You don't have the smell, so they are in a layer. 
they are in 20 different layers. A different compound has a different volatile temperature and you will smell all day. Now we have fragrance in our food. We have artificial food, we have artificial Kentucky Fried Chicken. We have that, that company now have a burger who smell like a meat, which is not real. So we don't know what they're feeding us, and what they're giving us in a drink. You have mango drink. You have this beautiful drink you got at Sonic. A mango, two dollar, three dollar mango, they put it in there for 79 cents. Whole mango, no, they are chemical. They are chemical made from benzene ring. Highly mutagenic chemical on earth. Anybody with basic chemistry knows benzene is a deadly. Most of the chemicals are made from benzene compound which are carcinogenic and they are definitely are neurogenic. Let me show you how they are. So I'm showing you one gross study. As you know, endocrine disturbing chemical change the gender of a person. The change, danger, gender is totally changed. If baby, the fetus is exposed to that. I'll show you this, this study from Denmark. A penis, a newborn baby's penis, urethra should be in here. It's slightly down. Other one is up here. His pee pee coming out of from here. One is up here between the two testicles. Many would not have the testicle descended all the way down. They have not there, it's empty. You see my point? I made my point. I won't tell you the name of that person. When I was in Philadelphia, there was a great pitcher, one of the greatest pitcher ever known in Philly, baseball player. And he came to my, and I was to do my clinical work. And I was doing routine exam. Remember all athletes need to be clear from all the health. They have to be free from any kind of problem before he, they start pitching like this, 100 miles an hour. He didn't have one. His both of testicle were still untied. Then he died from testicular cancer. Because remember, testicle when they descend, the temperature has to be one degree lower than the body temperature. Otherwise, those testicle will develop cancer. And this poor guy, I won't tell you what his name is. He was one of the best pitcher known to mankind. He can throw 100 miles all, all through the beginning, very fast and very spinny. But he died from testicular cancer because nobody, amazingly, nobody ever examined him correctly. Anyway, so you see my point, what's happening? So Dr. B is saying it is because of perfume. I'm saying because of fragrances and glyphosate, Roundup is the main culprit. I'm going to show you the data. It's not something made up by somebody. Where is most common is, where is the autism is most common? So we do a surgical analysis, epidemiological study, and this published by other group, where the people use the most perfume. The consumption of perfume, where is most by people, are this the where the most of the autism is. And who are those people? One in 30 child. See this place, little island called Japan in North and South Korea. Where you have in between, that's us, European people. Where we can afford, who can afford Beyonce's heat for 500 bucks or 300 bucks? That's too expensive for poor nation. You see, it's much less. Where it is very, very rare. Where it's forbidden to use synthetic comp compounds. So there's a group is a large group in a country called Saudi Arabia when it is forbidden to use synthetic compound, synthetic perfume. Only they can use natural. It's part of the religion. This is very strict, strict religious group called Wahhabi, Wahhabism, very popular group, very powerful. They are the run the country. The, the kings are all Wahhabi. I'm sure they use perfume because they can afford it, but religiously it's forbidden for them to use synthetic compound of any kind. Not in bathroom, nowhere. You cannot use in Makkah or Medina, you can use any kind of synthetic chemical. Only real perfume. See, as I mentioned to you, it used to be rare. Now it's going like crazy like this. 
And according to CDC, by 2032, every other child will have autism. Every other child will have ASD, autism spectrum disorder. So why it is so common? I'm going to, I already mentioned to you, if people think it's a genetic disease. What if I hypothesize to you and I can show you that yes, it is a genetic disease because genes are changed. But why the genes are changed? Why fetus has different genes, the mother and father? I'm doing this because I'm not Catholic, okay, anything like this. I'm saying mother and father because you got it. See, something is changing the DNA in here. So we just finished a study exposing perfume to the brain, fetal brain. We work with the fetal brain neuron. And we see what perfume does to them. In perfume chain, one in a billion dilution, Exposure change the DNA. And I can show you that data. But it's a genetic disease, yes, but why is this happening? Remember, genetic disease just don't happen. There are thousands of genes people have found in autistic children. Genes just don't change like this. Some of you know in here, standing in here, we have sickle cell gene. Sickle cell gene is around in human race for 2,400. 24,000 years. It has no change. Genes just don't go around, jump around, change. You can have thousands of genes change in a baby. It's just not doable. No, no life form on earth changes the gene like this. So you have a connection. Now let me prove to you why it is not a genetic disease. So we do, you do identical twin. Identical twin has exactly the same DNA, right? Am I right? They are maternal twin. We call them maternal twin. We call them monozygotic twin. If it was a genetic disease, the both children should have the same disease. Am I right? Because they have the same DNA. They have same gene mutation. But many of the monozygotic twin have a discordant. Result. This means one baby has autistic, other one is normal. One baby has severely autistic, other one is less. One baby has have normal middle of the road autism, other one is totally normal. You cannot tell. How is possible? I'm telling you as a pathologist, because the two identical twin never get the same amount of blood. So where is the toxin coming from? Where those things are coming from? Here or mother's fat. Most of the fragrance and synthetic chemical accumulate in mother's fat, the lipophilic. Lipophilic, when mother is pregnant, it's recycled because the evolutionary mother is designed to feed her baby. You know, baby needs a lot of food. Baby needs lots of food. It comes from recycled from here, it goes to baby's brain, and you have issue. So now let me show you that four different kinds of monozygotic twin happen in nature. So one is that it's a monoamniotic. There's no amniotic membrane here separating them. Here it is. It's a monochorionic. It's one placenta, both babies are there, but they have two different umbilical cords. One gets a little bit more blood than other. To explain why monozygotic twins are discordant in getting autism. Not only autism, but many other diseases like this. The other one has amniotic, you see the amniotic membrane here, but they are different umbilical cord. They're not getting the same amount of blood. The amount of blood is different, environment is different. The toxins are different, level of toxin. Now many times, both of will have autism. Because the dose is so high, my mother has taken whatever she had, ate and was, or is inhaled, it might have affected both them equally, but it's very, 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 very rare. Okay, it's not a common event. MIT, Dr. Stephanie Seneff has published enormous amount of data at MIT saying that amount of consumption of glyphosate in Roundup is the main reason that we get developing so much autism. We can see the more consumption, the more, um, the more children with autism. 
So this is her, her theory. I'm saying that probably many, many chemicals we are exposed to, we have become a synthetic chemical society. We smoke, eat, inhale, I mean, and we, we now in our food, food and drinks, we have artificial chemical. You have fake food, you have Kentucky Fried Chicken, you have all these mango drinks and watermelon drinks. You think they're giving you real watermelon? For God's sake. No, they're using chemical. Okay, all these drinks, which smell and taste like, what do you think? It's not. And it is spreading everywhere. I mean, it's fragrance has become part of our like normal life. A single perfume bottle contains four over four thousand synthetic chemical. Single perfume bottle, and many of them, but thousands of those are endocrine dis disrupting chemical. They disrupt the chemical. These are these are the name of the chemical. Now. They are lipophilic. I mentioned they stick into the, they accumulate into the woman's. See, remember, women accumulate energy, evolutionary speaking, in their buttock and in their breast. The design, so when woman has pregnant, she had to feed the baby. See, baby doesn't wait to eat, mother to eat. Baby has to be eaten constantly. So this recycle, this recycle very fast. And you will notice it right away if somebody is pregnant, that their shape changes. Because they're eating a lot, they're accumulating a lot of fat. If they're accumulating a lot of fat, that has to be dissolved and given into baby in the form of energy. With the energy, you have all accumulated chemical in there. So you are messing up your baby, how can I tell you? Because a mother is older the mother, chances of her having artistic baby is higher. That's what data shows. That's what science tells us. So you can't argue with science. Truth is truth, right? Fact is fact. So why is happening? I'm going to cut down my talk a little bit. I'm going to tell you two secrets. It will freak you out totally. A fetus, eight week fetus, a boy, so remember, autism is five times more common in boy than girl. And I have data on it, but I may not be able to show you all of it. So you can see a fetal baby at eight weeks start to make testosterone, steroid. So boys on a steroid from the very early stage of their life. When they're fetus, they're on a steroid. See the amount of fetus the baby is exposed to? Almost same with the adult. See my point? Anything we're going to act like a steroid in the fetal life going to affect the engineering of the brain of that boy or girl. If girl exposed to testosterone, see, girl never, never exposed to testosterone, only estrogen. Her estrogen level is very low when she's growing up, only when she reaches puberty, kicks off, and you have a giant estrogen cycle. Boy have testosterone up to here, eight week to 24 weeks, if anything interfere with that life in the boy, if you have too much steroid, any synthetic chemical, any endocrine disturbing chemical, that will affect that boy's brain. And girl's brain, how do we know? At around eight to 24 weeks, your finger develops. See that baby? Actually, I have another picture of it, but I decided not to put it in. It was very funny. The baby was showing finger, but I decided not to put that in. <laughs> this is called number two digit, next to your thumb. This is called number four. An autistic boy, not all of them, but many of them, this finger will be bigger than fourth. See my point? Now, all, everybody started to look at the hand, right, right away. <laughs> it's normal. Left and right, both sides. Some people have just only one side. Because this is the way it developed. This is the way it is going to change the digital ratio. You see my point? 
Not only that, but there are more other things goes into it, which I cannot go into it right now with you, because it will be too obscene for me to say those things. But you see the ratio, 2D, 4D ratio. Now girls don't get any testosterone. Boy's brain designed to do engineering work. Boy is the organizer. Boy is what? Organizer. Girl is the empathizer. She will empathize with anyone. That's the way her brain developed from the very early fetal life. Boy jobs are different. Our brains are engineered totally differently, male and female. From the early stage of our gestational life, eight weeks of gestation, when you are this big, your brain is being engineered totally differently. Everybody see that? I'm going to, I know everybody's going to freak out. A girl has that unusual hand, this finger will be much bigger, this bigger. And this girl is a man, management expert. She will be engineer, she has like engineering kind of brain, she will be a surgeon, she will be an expert on things people don't even realize. That finger is that big. Okay, so I'm going to, so we have, we used to have natural fragrance. We move away from natural fragrance. Now we're doing all this unusual thing with our, uh, our flavor. Flavors are everywhere, you can do without flavor. What I'm going to do, is going to move some of these. So 30% of artistic baby has 30% bigger brain. 30%. So you're talking about 100 billion neurons. This baby has 130 billion neurons. Lots of them. If they're connected correctly, this is a normal connection. And this we do in vitro, this, this connection correctly is great. If not, if connected correctly, that person going to have Asperger syndrome would be a genius. Have some issues, minor issues, but will have genius. So this is a normal brain neuron look like male and female. We dilute, we dilute a fragrance one to 10 million dilution, one to 10 million, and expose them only for 24 hours. Look at what happened to the brain. This is a fetal brain neuron. Look at the axon going all over the place. Just to show you, this is the way the axon look like, a normal brain. This is the way axon and Neuron look like this. Look at this. Totally messed up. You see my point? This perfume does to you. I'm not going to go in great deal of detail to so where the defects are and why they are in a specific place. So you have defect in amygdala. Memories. 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 That, that is the, what we are, part of human being, makes us to remember things. Hypothalamus. This is our main part of connecting between the old endocrine gland and our thalamus control the sensory nerve center. This is the way the defects are in that in autistic brain. Communication. Now testosterone level, I already talked to you about it. I want to show you this slide to show you every single perfume. We have tested every single perfume available in the market that makes several thousand, I can only show you this. This is a carcinogenic mutagenic agent. It's called 4-NOPD. Perfume in one to 10 million dilution does that to the baby's brain. So many mutation is causes. Look at the mutation. So you can see it happens. One more place when we connect with people. We have a center in our brain we have certain cells in our brain called oxytocin and arginine vasopressin, vasopressin neuron. They are the one who, may, the way we make connection with people. We relate to people. You are making connection with me because you're looking at me, right? Eye contact. You know what I'm doing, what I'm, how I'm acting, what I'm doing, and you understand what I'm doing. Autistic children have lack of those neurons 
because some synthetic chemical killed them off when they were eight weeks of gestation. You can see here, it's a normal brain, and after you expose them to one to 10 million concentration of perfume, that's what happened, and this what happening. I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna go into detail where these neurons are. These are the way the oxytocin neurons are. Why boys are more common than girls? What is happening? There's a gene, there's a gene defect happen in boys more than girls when they're exposed to endocrine disturbing chemicals. We just finished, completed this work. And what happened to them? That gene called Rora gene, it basically is down regulated very, very bad in, in boys as compared to girls. So you can see it's in here different kinds of chemicals in here, endocrine disturbing chemical in here is totally down regulated. And they are the one who makes all this main genetic connection. Gene, which are involved in autism, disturb, disturb in autistic children, they are connected with Rora. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stop right here.